Introducing Red Hat Smart Management. Red Hat Smart Management allows you to easily manage your Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems, on-premises or in the cloud, whichever works best for your needs. Red Hat Smart Management combines the flexibility and powerful infrastructure management capabilities of Red Hat Satellite with the simplicity of cloud management services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. If you are a Red Hat Satellite customer, you may already have access to cloud management services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. There is a lot of content available for Red Hat Satellite, so this video will focus on the newest offering in Smart Management, which is Cloud Management Services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The new Cloud Management Services that are included with Smart Management provide the ability to manage Red Hat Enterprise Linux hosts wherever they reside, on-premise, virtualized, or using any supported cloud provider. These services focus on the functionality that you need and offer key benefits of software as a service, such as you don't need to install, update, or maintain software. You're always on the latest version, and it's easy to set up and register. Cloud management services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is accessed via cloud.redhat.com, the home for all of Red Hat's software as a service products. The homepage of cloud.redhat.com will change over time as offerings expand and grow. But currently, there are three tiles. The first tile is how you access Red Hat Insights which assesses your Red Hat Enterprise Linux environment to help you proactively identify and remediate threats, avoiding outages and unplanned downtime. Red Hat Insights is included with your Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. The second tile is how you access cloud management services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which helps you optimize and manage your Red Hat Enterprise Linux environments securing the foundation of your IT infrastructure. And the third tile is how you access OpenShift Cluster Manager, which allows you to view, provision, and manage all OpenShift clusters from a single unified dashboard. We'll begin by selecting the tile for Cloud Management Services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. On the dashboard, you will see the high-level graphs for the offered services. The current services are Vulnerability, Compliance, and System Comparison. Vulnerability is one of the services included in Cloud Management Services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Vulnerability enables you to assess, monitor, report, and remediate common vulnerability and exposures, or CVEs, in your Red Hat environment with ease so that you can secure your data and your business from malicious actors and threats. Vulnerability looks at all CVEs with errata. You may already be familiar with Red Hat Insights, which proactively identifies known high-risk configurations within your environment and provides tailored and automated remediation steps to mitigate those risks. And you might be asking yourself how the capabilities and vulnerability compare to those of Insights. While security is a component of what Insights checks for, Red Hat Insights covers issues across availability, security, stability, and performance. So while yes, Insights can identify some high-impact security issues such as Spectre and Meltdown, it can also identify if your OpenShift host has insufficient CPU or memory, if your file systems have less than 95% free space, or if your network interfaces aren't operating at optimum capacity. Insights can detect all of these types of issues and offer automated remediations. But when we compare to just security concerns, Insights covers only about 50 
high visibility or celebrity CVEs, while vulnerability covers all known CVEs with errata, currently approaching 20,000. Insights also uses a proprietary scoring system, while vulnerability uses the standard Common Vulnerability Scoring System, or CVSS, to score risks. Let's take a look at how vulnerability works. On the dashboard of Cloud Management Services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you will see the high-level graphs for these services. The current services are Vulnerability, Compliance, and System Comparison. Since we're looking at vulnerability, we'll start by clicking Vulnerabilities in the left-hand navigation bar. As mentioned, vulnerability shows all vulnerabilities within errata, so this might be a sizable list. I have a few hundred systems in this environment, and at the top, you can see there are about 2,000 vulnerabilities that have been detected across these hosts. By default, you only see the vulnerabilities that affect your environment. If you uncheck Hide CVEs that do not affect my inventory, you can see the full list of CVEs that vulnerabilities looks for, which is approaching 20,000. Let's reselect the checkbox. On the top of the menu bar, you can search for a specific CVE, filter by the CVSS base score, and if you select the three vertical dots next to CVSS base score, you get the option to export the vulnerabilities below to JSON or CSV formats. Along with viewing by CVE, you can also view by systems. If you click the systems tab at the top, you can search for and select specific systems. This will also let you see the specific number of vulnerabilities per system and the last time that system was seen. Returning to the CVEs page, let's sort by the most critical CVEs. Let's select the CVSS base score dropdown and choose CVSS scores between 7 and 10. The default view is newest first, but let's sort by CVSS score so that I can see the highest rated vulnerabilities that impact my systems. Let's select the CVE with the highest CVSS, which is CVE 2018-7750. This detailed page gives more details about the CVE, links to both the Red Hat CVE and the MITRE CVE database, and more information on the rating. Scrolling down the page, I can see the impacted systems and statuses. Select one or more of the systems that have this issue, and the Remediate with Ansible button becomes available. Select this button to create an Ansible playbook to resolve the issue. To remediate, you can create a new playbook or add remediation to an existing playbook. Let's create a new playbook and give it the CVE name. Then click Next. This page summarizes the action you are taking, a summary of the resolution, if a reboot is required, how many systems, and what type of playbook. Remediation of this issue does require a reboot, so auto-reboot is enabled. Click the Create Playbook button. A hyperlink appears on the name of the playbook. You can click that link directly or navigate to it later using Remediations on the left-hand navigation bar. Looking at the playbook, we can see a summary of the systems that either will be or will not be rebooted, if auto-reboot is enabled, and when the playbook was created and modified. Further down the page, you can see the actions included, and if you expand, you can see the systems associated with each action. At the top, you have the option to download or delete the playbooks. Downloading the playbook will download it to your local machine you are using to access cloud.redhat.com. Let's take a quick look at the playbook. Adjust the playbook if needed, then you will need to transfer the playbook to a host where Ansible is installed to run the playbook. 
Compliance is one of the services included in cloud management services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Compliance enables you to assess, monitor, report, and remediate internal and external regulatory and compliance requirements of your Red Hat environment with ease. In order to be compliant and secure, from malicious actors and threats. Let's take a look at how this works. Since we're looking at compliance, we'll start by clicking Compliance in the left-hand navigation bar. On the Policies page, you are shown any policies that you have configured via OpenSCAP. Currently, I only have one policy, the standard system security profile for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. All of my systems are within the compliance threshold. Clicking the More Details button gives you more information about the policy. The details include a description of the policy and the minimum threshold for compliance, which is currently set at 95%. The minimum threshold for compliance is important since security policies are purposefully difficult to meet and 100% compliance may be unreasonable for your business needs. As a result, compliance offers a configurable threshold. This one is set at 95%, meaning that any system meeting at least 95% of rules within a policy is considered compliant, and systems below that threshold are highlighted as non-compliant. This isn't based on the rules of the policies themselves, only the average compliance with the policy, called the Compliance Score. You can change the Compliance Threshold in the Actions drop-down menu. If I scroll down the page, I see the individual systems being evaluated, the profile assigned, number of rules failed, the Compliance Score, and the date of the last scan. You can select a system to see more details, including the individual rules of the policy. This will tell you if the system is compliant or not, how many rules in the policy are passed or failed, and the name of the profile being evaluated. Further down the page, you can see the individual rules. The default shows all rules, but you can hide the past rules by clicking the Hide Past Rules checkbox. For rules that have failed, if the Ansible logo is shown in blue, then you can remediate the failed rule via an Ansible playbook. Select one or more of the issues that have a failed rule, and the Remediate with Ansible button becomes available. Select this button to create an Ansible playbook to resolve the issue. To remediate, you can create a new playbook or add remediation to an existing playbook. Let's create a new playbook. Start by giving it a name, then click Next. This page summarizes the actions you are taking, a summary of the resolution, if a reboot is required, how many systems, and what type of playbook. Remediation of this issue does require a reboot, so auto-reboot is enabled. Click the Create Playbook button. Navigate to the playbook using Remediations on the left-hand navigation bar. Then click the playbook that you just created. Looking at the playbook, we can see a summary of the systems that either will be or will not be rebooted, if auto-reboot is enabled, and when the playbook was created and modified. Further down the page, you can see the actions included, and if you expand, you can see the systems associated with each action. At the top, you have the option to download or delete the playbooks. Downloading the playbook will download it to your local machine you are using to access cloud.redhat.com. Let's take a quick look at the playbook. Adjust the playbook if needed, then you will need to transfer the playbook to a host where Ansible is installed to run the playbook. System Comparison is one of the services included in Cloud Management Services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. System Comparison enables you to compare system configuration of one host 
to other hosts in your environment. When comparing across different systems, you can filter the display profile facts, highlighting areas that match, are different, or where information is missing. You can also generate CSV output of the systems that you are comparing. Let's take a look at how this works. Since we're looking at system comparison, we'll start by clicking System Comparison in the left-hand navigation bar. Start by clicking the Add System button. Let's begin by looking at two systems. These were created using the same base image, so ideally they would be pretty much the same. This shows a list of facts that have been gathered on the system. Mostly these match as is expected. At the top, I can filter for specific facts. I can also filter the view to show me only the facts that are the same, different, or where you have incomplete information. These systems should be pretty close, but I want to see what differences have popped up over time. There are only a few differences, which is expected. Things like the system ID, boot time, and some of the information in the network interface section, such as the IP addresses, should be different. However, I also see there are some differences in the installed packages section, so I'll expand that. Over time, some packages have been upgraded on host 1, but not host 2. Let's add a few more hosts to compare. There isn't a limit to the number of hosts that you can add, but you may start having to scroll. It could help to minimize the left navigation menu. Now as I look across more systems, I can see additional differences. If I look at infrastructure vendor, I can see that some hosts are KVM, some are overt, and some are rev. In the top right, you can click the three vertical dots to see more options, which in this case will allow you to export the current selection to a CSV file. You can open that CSV file with the tool of your choice so that you can easily compare the facts between different machines. This has been a short overview of system comparison included with cloud management services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux as part of your smart management subscription.